Amen. All right. Now, in Psalm chapter number 14, I'm going to be focusing on that very first verse that says, The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. And um, we're going to be covering the, the topic of fools tonight. And the, the title of my sermon is Don't Be a Fool. And um, we're going to learn a lot of the different attributes of a fool so that we can avoid foolish attributes. And the Bible talks a lot about this, mostly in the book of Proverbs. If you want to, go ahead and turn to Proverbs chapter 24. And um, we're going we're gonna to be flipping back and forth between a lot of these different passages within Proverbs. This could be the vast majority of our time spent tonight because Proverbs talks a lot about fools and it's a book of wisdom. And we're going to see here, you know, the very first thing the Bible calls... Um, well, in, that we just read in Psalm 14, the Bible refers to someone who does not believe in God, someone who says there is no God. These are your atheists, right? The atheists of the day say there is no God, they're fools. According to the Bible, for the fool said in his heart, there is no God. And it's funny because a lot of these people will tout their education and they're so scholarly and they're so academic and they're so smart. And they have, their pride just lifts them up to heaven because they have such intellect. And, and they're fools. The Bible says that you're a fool. If you don't believe that God exists, you're a fool. Brother Sebastian and I had a conversation with a, with a, fool. a fool. Yeah, thank you. It was with a fool. He was a younger man. He was like 20 years old. But um, he was a fool. And, and, and he trusted in the false, the falsely so-called science of today, and trusted in evolution, and trusted in all of this stuff, and didn't believe that God was real. He kind of believed in something that's like an energy. He didn't. He wasn't really clear with what he believed, but he um, he was relying on the the wisdom of men and the education of this world. And he was just going to college and and getting brainwashed by some public education system. And um, just refusing to believe the, the Bible. And, and I like talking to people like this because I am a science guy. That is my background. That is what I like. I, I have a computer science degree. I've always been apt for math and science. And it's something that's always intrigued me and interested me. I love the sciences. I really do. And, and I still do. And for, right after I got saved, this was the first thing that I had to look to was, what about evolution? That was my big question. I had been lied. I had been deceived into thinking that, you know, we all came from monkeys. We all came from some single-celled organism that's, you know, real simple. And, and all this other nonsense. And I love talking to these people because the proof is so easy to show. It, it's so easy to display how modern science fails completely and the propaganda that they're pushing by not showing you all of the evidence and just showing you what they want to show you in order to achieve their agenda of trying to convince you that there is no God. They're all a bunch of fools. But this sermon isn't about evolution. It's not about science. It's not about any of that stuff. This is about fools. So we're going to see a lot more of the attributes of being a fool. The first one, as I said, is, is found there in Psalm 14. It's also found in Psalm 53. Look those up when you get a chance. Psalm 14 and Psalm 53 are almost identical psalms. Very few differences. Very interesting. Um, it's almost the same exact psalm, but they both start off exactly the same. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. You're in Proverbs 24. Look at verse number 9. One of the reasons why we're covering fools and, fool and um, foolish attributes is because in verse 9 it says, the thought of foolishness is sin and the scorner is an abomination to men. Most people don't even realize this, that the, the thought of foolishness is sin. He's saying even thinking about it, even thinking foolish thoughts. Well, what are foolish thoughts? Well, we're going to get into that as we start looking at attributes. So just keep that in mind that the thought of foolishness is sin and you say, well, what does that apply to? Well, we're going to start seeing, seeing the attributes of a fool and a foolishness. So as we start looking at this, and you say, oh, okay, well, if I'm thinking about this, and I'm thinking about that, all these different attributes, then it's a foolish thought and it's sin, according to the Bible. And um, so let's look at this. Turn, flip over your wood to Proverbs 1. We're going to be kind of jumping back and forth. I'm sorry about that, but I, I've kind of have these, my points are, are 
in core chunks of attributes. So there's, there's certain chapters that, that have a lot of verses on fools, but we're only looking at certain verses at a time. So right now, my first point is, is the first attribute that we're looking at is how fools despise wisdom and instruction. True wisdom from God, true instruction, right, from the Bible. Things that are truthful, fools despise wisdom. They despise instruction. That's why the atheists is, get, they tend to get angry when you try to talk to them about the Bible, when you try to tell them the truth of Jesus Christ and the truth of his word. They, they, they tend to get angry. They despise it. They hate it. They don't want to hear it because they're fools. Because that's what a fool does. Proverbs 1 verse 7 says that very thing. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. They don't want to hear it. They want have nothing to do with it. Jump down to verse 22. The Bible says, how long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. A fool doesn't want to know True wisdom, instruction, and knowledge. They hate it. But, it, but it's interesting. It's funny. We'll see this a little bit later, how they, how they pride themselves on knowledge and wisdom. And it's all the wisdom and knowledge of this world and as not necessarily truthful wisdom and knowledge that comes from God. Um, flip over to Proverbs 13. Proverbs 13. Chapter 13. We're going to see some more attributes of, of the fool and, and how they despise wisdom and instruction. Verse 16 of Proverbs 13 says, Every prudent man dealeth with knowledge, but a fool layeth open his folly. What that's saying there in verse 16, it says, you know, if you're prudent, prudent would be another name for wise and, and, and having discernment of your knowledge. Uh, a prudent man dealeth with knowledge. He knows how to deal with it. But a fool lays open his folly, his, his misunderstanding, his misguidance. He lays it wide open for everybody to see. Verse 17, a wicked messenger falleth into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is health. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth instruction, but he that regardeth it reproof shall be honored. He's saying, look, if you can't receive instruction, you're going to fall into poverty and shame. And what do fools hate? They hate wisdom and instruction. And a fool is going to fall into poverty and shame because of that dis despite for wisdom and instruction. Verse nine, 19, the desire accomplished is sweet to the soul, but it is abomination to fools to depart from evil. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. So here, these two verses, 19 and 20, go hand in hand. It's because it's saying it's an abomination. Fools hate to depart from evil. They don't want to depart from evil. That's what they do. They're drawn to doing evil. And it's an abomination for them to even think of departing from evil, according to the Bible. And, he said, and that's why, because they're drawn to doing evil, he says, a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Now, I preached about this this morning of, of having the wrong friends. You want to make sure that you're not hanging around and being friends with a, a company of fools, with a bunch of people who are fools, people who despise wisdom and instruction because their, their heart and their mind is going to be set on doing evil and doing wicked things. And um, they're going to be brought to poverty and shame. You don't want this... Um, clinging to you in any way whatsoever. You want to be uh, as far away from this as possible. Uh, you're in Proverbs 13. Flip over to chapter 15. Chapter 15, verse 5 says, A fool despiseth his father's instruction, but he that regardeth reproof is prudent. So again, we see that, that you know, your, their own dad's instruction. You know, your, your dad typically is going to try to teach you right from wrong, um, and a fool despises that instruction. They want to have nothing to do with that. Um, verse or chapter 23, verse 9, Proverbs 23, 9 says, Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. Fools despise wisdom. Okay, we've got the picture on that. It's very clear, said multiple times in the Bible here, that, that a, a fool doesn't want to hear 
the wisdom of thy words. He doesn't want to hear the wisdom of the Bible. So how do you not become a fool? Don't shut your ears to the Bible. When the messages are being preached, don't turn it off. You want to listen to the instruction that God has for you. Maybe something you hear, and it's come, if it's coming from the Bible, you hear something, and, and God's rebuking you for your sin. He's trying to instruct you. Hey, look, this is the way I want you to go. Don't be a fool. Don't disregard that instruction that God's trying to give you. Don't disregard the reproof or the rebuke that you're receiving because of the sins that you're doing. No, don't be a fool. Hear it, receive it, and, and, and want to hear that instruction so that you can become better. I mean, even thinking these foolish thoughts, right? We know that's a sin. We should want to avoid that to get right with God. And, um, you know, lay this to heart. Don't, don't be a fool. Don't, don't despise or, or reject God's word. Uh, flip over to Proverbs chapter 12. We're going to see here that a fool cannot be corrected. It goes hand in hand with the wisdom and instruction, not wanting to hear it. Um, they also don't want to be corrected. A fool is not able to receive correction. Proverbs 12. Look at verse number 15 of Proverbs 12. The Bible reads, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. A fool's wrath is presently known, but a prudent man covereth shame. So to a fool, everything that they do is right in their own eyes. They say, well, everything I'm doing is just fine. And the reason what's wrong about that is that it's right in their own eyes. See, when we do things, we ought to be thinking, is this right in God's eyes? And that's how we judge whether what we're doing is righteous or not, whether what we're doing is right. It's not just a matter of opinion. Well, am I just doing right in my own eyes? Because then that's just a matter of your heart and your belief and just whatever you think um, can lead you and, and the, the fool is just concerned about doing right in his own eyes. It says, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. So the, the foolish ways, they, they don't see a problem with what they're doing. We need to seek the wisdom and instruction that they despise. Flip over to Proverbs 17. Proverbs 17, verse number 10 says, a reproof entereth more into a wise man than in hundred stripes into a fool. So we start to see here the stubbornness of fools. Because it's talking about, you know, if, if you're a wise man, when you're corrected, when, you, when someone reproves you and tells you that you're wrong, you know, a wise man will receive that. It says a wise man's way more likely to receive that than in hundred stripes into a fool. So a hundred stripes, that's talking about like a whipping, right? People used to be, whipped and they probably still do in some countries, I don't know, where you know you commit a crime or you do something, usually it's something really foolish. You know, if you're a thief or you go out and do something, they'll give you these lashes, they'll give you these whips, and they call them stripes because when you get whipped, it would leave a, usually a bloody stripe on your back. And I mean a hundred stripes, that's a lot. Think about getting whipped a hundred times where you're just getting you know, man. But that's how stubborn a fool is. A fool does not want to hear anything, even when they're being corrected. They're being corrected time after time after time. They just don't want to hear it. We need to make sure we don't have that type of a stubborn attitude where we're, we're closing ourselves off to hearing the truth and you just keep rejecting it. Say, no, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Like, I know this is a problem. I don't want to deal with it. I like my sin or whatever the case may be and just get this stubborn attitude. It's a foolish attitude to have. Let's look at verse 11. It says, And an evil man seeketh only rebellion. Therefore, a cruel messenger shall be sent against him. Let a bear robbed of her whelps meet a man rather than a fool in his folly. So it's better for you to think about this. A bear robbed of her whelps. Talking about her babies, right? Her baby little cubs. You, you, you hear the, um, you know, the, the stories about mother, you know, mama bear. Mama bear gets angry when her little cubs are in danger. Right? Mama bear gets really protective and, and that's when you hear about these bears sometimes doing these bear attacks when a person might not even realize it. A, a bear's cubs are real close at hand and someone's out in the woods and they don't even know that the cubs are there. And then mama bear sees it and she comes and she'll attack the, 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 that person. They don't care how big you are or how, how strong you are. 
the, the mama bear will come and attack you. And that's why this proverb is saying, you know, let a bear robbed of her whelps meet a man. So the mama bear has gotten, who's had her cubs taken from her. It's better to, to, to meet that than it is to meet a fool in his folly. Um, pretty strong analogy there. It's pretty strong words on, on not dealing with a fool. And, and we're going to get into that too, how we ought to deal with fools. Flip over to um, Proverbs 27. Actually, just, you know, go ahead and turn to Proverbs 9. I'll just read these for you. We're, I think we're getting the point on a fool cannot be corrected. Proverbs 20, 27, 22 reads, Though thou shouldest bray a fool in a mortar among wheat with a pestle, yet will not his foolishness depart from him. Again, it kind of goes back to a similar concept of like beating him, like, like it's not going to drive away their foolishness. And Ecclesiastes 4.13 says, Better is a poor and a wise child than an old and foolish king who will no more be admonished. So this is talking about a king, you know, it's better to be this poor child. You know, not have much going for you, poor, but you're wise, a wise child, than a king, an old king who's established, yet he's no more going to be admonished. It's better for you just to be a poor child than it is to be that old king. Um, old and foolish king, excuse me. Being a fool is in, is in painting a pretty picture here. You're in Proverbs chapter 9. We're going to see some attributes of a foolish woman now. A foolish woman. And these, these, you know, the foolishness, I think, can apply to everybody. But here's a section now that's kind of applying directly to women and, and to women's attributes in, in Proverbs chapter 9. So we're going to look at verse number 13 that talks about a foolish woman. The Bible says, A foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. Now that word clamorous is, is basically a word that means loud. You might think of a woman who's clamorous, you think of someone who's loud and obnoxious. Someone, you know, the Bible says that women should have a, a meek and a quiet spirit. And that is of great value in the eyes of the Lord. That, these are the attributes that a woman should try to attain. But a clamorous woman, someone who's, who's real loud and just, just obnoxious, that is a foolish woman. And it also says that a foolish woman is simple and knoweth nothing. So, you know, some people have this idea of, oh, women are supposed to be quiet and stupid and just, you know, not, and just ignorant. And no, God does not want women to be ignorant or, you know, the Bible says simple. It's another word for stupid. God wants women to be educated just as much as men. You, you ought to have education and intellect and, and be smart. Um, women, for example, you know, a, a mother, it's a mother's job to teach their children. It's also a father's job too, but the mother spends so much more time with it. So you don't want a, a simple woman teaching your children and your children are going to grow up simple. It, it, you know, it's a, it's a very good attribute for, for a woman to be smart and to have good intellect. Otherwise, you, you would end up being a foolish woman. Verse number 14 says, For she sitteth at the door of her house, talking about a foolish woman, on a seat in the high places of the city to call passengers who go right on their ways. Whoso is simple, let him turn in hither. And as for him that wanteth understanding, she saith to him, stolen waters are sweet and bread eaten in, se in secret is pleasant. But he knoweth not that the dead are there and that her guests are in the depths of hell. This is talking about a foolish woman who is a, a fornicator, or an adulterous woman. Someone who's hunting for, for the precious life. Someone who's out there, you know, trying to call in the stupid men that don't know the Bible, that don't know God's wisdom, and just trying to appeal to their senses to get them to fornicate with her and to lie with her and to commit wickedness and sin. Hey, you're a foolish man if you partake in any of that, and you're a foolish woman if you, if you do likewise. The, the whore, the adulteress, is, is, is also a foolish woman. Because they don't understand God's judgment and God's laws and God's instruction for us. That is what makes you a fool, is not knowing this stuff, not, not caring about it and rejecting it. Proverbs 14 verse 1 says, Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down 
with her hands. A wise woman is going to be interested in her house, in her children, in her family, and in her actual physical dwelling place. A wise woman is going to build that house, going to look to it and, and make it grow and, and succeed. But the foolish and, you know, will pluck it down with their hands and, and end up destroying their own house, which is a very foolish thing to do. Um, that's all we have specifically geared towards women is in, in this sermon as far as foolishness goes. But um, I thought that was pretty interesting talking about a foolish woman. Let's get back now to another attribute of fools. Turn, if you would, to Proverbs 14. We just already read verse number 1. Um, we're going to be in Proverbs 14. We're going to continue reading in verse number 2. Now we're going to be looking at the mouth of a fool. There's a lot of scripture about the mouth of fools. And again, keep this in mind. We don't want to be like fools, so we're going to, we're going to avoid all these attributes. Verse number 2 of Proverbs 14 says, He that walketh in his uprightness feareth the Lord, but he that is perverse in his ways despiseth him. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride, but the lips of the wise shall preserve them. So, you know, you, get the, you see this all the time, that rod of pride. Um, Very interesting language because it uses that word a rod, and a rod is usually used to, you know, to strike. You think of, of, of children um, to withhold not correction from thy son, and um, if thou beat him with the rod, he shall not die, um, but thou shalt deliver his soul from hell. So it's, it's referring to the mouth of a foolish person, the things that they speak as a rod, but as a rod of pride. So they speak very... Um, lofty things. They, they're, they're very proud of, of what they say and they're very demeaning in the way that they say things, which is very common. They'll, they'll talk to Christians and be like, oh yeah, you stupid Christians. You actually believe the Bible and all this other stuff. It's a rod of pride that's coming out of their mouth because they're fools. Uh, Proverbs 14, let's jump down to verse 16. The Bible says, a wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool rageth and is confident he that is soon angry dealeth foolishly, and a man of wicked devices is hated. So the fool rageth. He gets, he gets angry quickly. Uh, again, another attribute you want to stay away from. You shouldn't be one that is just really quick to anger. And um, we ought to be able to be temperate and patient and control our emotions and be in control all the time. When you lose your temper and you're soon angry, that's when you end up dealing with foolishly. You're going to end up making foolish mistakes. You're going to say foolish things and um, it, it's not going to be coming out of a, a sound, sober, um, temperate mind. And you're going to start talking like you have the mouth of a fool when you get soon angry. That's what the Bible says, the fool rageth and is confident. He does, you know, he, he's quick to spout off his mouth and, and have this confidence about the things that he's saying while he's really angry. Um, that's a foolish a a attitude to have. Let's flip over to Proverbs 17. Again, we're, st we're still kind of looking at now the attributes of the mouth of a fool, the things that a fool says. Proverbs 17, verse 27 reads, He that hath knowledge spareth his words, and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise, and he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. So what is it saying? Verse 27, if you have knowledge, you're not going to just be blabbing away and just, and just saying all kinds of things and the first thing that comes into your mind and just be talking and talking and talking. If you have knowledge, you're going to spare your words. You're going to choose your words. You're going to say what you mean and mean what you say instead of just, having no filter and just saying the first thing that pops into your mind without giving it a thought as to, is this right? Is this true what I'm saying? Um, and it says, a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit, even a fool when he holdeth his peace. So what this is telling me that a fool can be counted wise. It means they can be looked on as a wise person if they could just shut their mouth. And this is one way how you could tell a fool from someone who's not a fool is based on the things that they say. A foolish person is going to be not able typically to hold their peace because if they were able to, then they would be counted wise. It says, and he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. If you have great understanding, you'll be able to sit there 
and or stand there or whatever and and you know here even if things are making you mad even if some of the things are being said are, are being done to goad you to to get you to react the wise thing to do would not be to just respond instantly and be soon angry and get caught up in that type of strife the wise thing is to choose your words carefully it doesn't mean you don't respond you respond but you do it in a way where you're processing everything and you're saying things, you know, exactly. And the things that you that you mean to say that you'll be saying them. I mean, you won't be speaking like a fool. And, you know, if there's things that you don't quite understand or you're not really too sure about, you could express that you, you know, you're not quite sure about them, or just even just keep that to yourself. Um, so that you're not counted as a fool for just saying things that aren't true. And just in repeating lies or repeating gossip or whatever. Um, continuing on here, flip over to chapter 18, Proverbs 18. In verse number 6, the Bible reads, A fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calleth for strokes. A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. So a fool's mouth is going to get him into trouble. When it says a fool's lips enter into contention, it means that, that he's bringing about fights. Fools like to get in fights and arguments and debates and just, and just cause contention. And it's easy for them to do that when they're just spouting off dumb things or hurtful things or whatever. You know, when they're using that rod of pride and they're speaking foolishly, their foolish lips enter into contention and his mouth calleth for strokes, meaning he's like looking for a beating. Um, and that's why his mouth is his destruction, his lips are the snare of his soul. Flip over to Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse number 18. The Bible reads, He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. So more attributes of a fool that have to do with your mouth. He's saying if you're hiding your hatred with lying lips. So, you, you know, you really don't like someone, you're just lying to them and, and praising them or whatever. Um, and it says, he that uttereth a slander is a fool. So you're a fool for, for a hiding, you know, it, it's an attribute of a fool. If uh, a fool will typically hide their hatred for people and be deceitful and they'll, they'll lie with their lips to, um, to hide their hatred and fools also uttereth slanders. They, they start spreading rumors about people, things that aren't true. It's what a slander is. You're, you're talking bad about somebody and you're just making stuff up. A fool utters a slander. Verse number 19, let's keep reading. In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. Very similar to what we already read um, a, the, a previous chapter ago in, in chapter 18. You don't want to be someone who just talks and 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 talks a lot because the Bible says that in the multitude of words, in a lot of words, there wanteth not sin. It means there doesn't lack sin. Basically, if you just keep if you just keep going and going and going and going, and I better watch myself. <laughs> it says there, there wanteth not sin. There doesn't, you know, you should. You, it's easy to sin the more you just keep on going and talking and talking. Um, it says, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. You don't have to continue talking. Uh, you know, my wife and I are, are very similar. We're not the type of people that feel like when we're together, if there's silence, it just needs to be filled with talking. It just needs to be filled with some kind of a noise. We're both very good at, at, at enjoying each other and enjoying silence. But, um, you know, some people, they just feel the need. They just have to just keep on talking and talking. And, and after a while, it's like, what are you going to be talking about? You end up talking about foolish things because... <laughs> you just keep on going and going and going. Something isn't is is probably not going to end up of sin. Where it says the, the multiple words are wanted, not sin. Let's keep reading here. Verse number twenty: The tongue of the just is as choice silver; the heart of the wicked is little worth. The lips of the righteous feed many, but fools die for want of wisdom. The blessing of the Lord it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. It is as sport to a fool to do mischief, but a man of understanding hath wisdom. And this doesn't necessarily have to do with their mouth, but this is just another attribute. It didn't fall into its own category. Um, it's like a game for a fool to do mischief, like to, to do um, 
to do it wicked, to do evil, to do wrong to people. A fool delights in that stuff, and it's just like a game to go out and, and, and do mischief. I think of the, the, the common thing now is you see the, the knockout game, right? Yeah. It's foolish. That is total fool. That, that, that is the definition of a fool. Someone who wants to go out and it's sport to them. It's a game. They record ha, 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 to do mischief. Mischief by going and violating someone else and injuring that person and knocking them out cold on the street. That is a fool. If you participate in that, you are a fool. But it's sport to those fools. They think it's funny. They think it's a game to go out and do mischief and to knock people out cold and video record it and upload it to YouTube and think, ha, 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 that was so funny. Because you're some punk that, that doesn't know how to, how, you know, you have no respect for others and you're a coward and you need to just go up and cold clock somebody with them not even seeing you and you think that's a game and you think that's funny. And people get seriously injured from that. That's what a fool does. That's, that is a good definition. It's a, a, a good application of Proverbs 10.23. It is sport to a fool to do mischief. Proverbs 29.11, you have to turn there, says, A fool uttereth all his mind. Turn, if you would, to Ecclesiastes 5. A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. Again, the same thing. A fool is known by their much speaking. They, they speak a lot. But a wise man's going to keep it in until afterwards, until he's digested it, until he knows exactly what he wants to say and he speaks right things. Proverbs 29, 20 says, Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words, there is more hope of a fool than of him. We ought not to be hasty with the things that we say. Don't be quick to react and quick to respond. Again, Oftentimes, this will happen when people will say things to you that you don't like or that you don't want to hear or maybe it's an insult or maybe, you know, whatever it is. There's a lot of things that people can say to you that can, that can trigger an emotional response. You don't want to be hasty with your words. The Bible says there's more hope of a fool. We haven't seen very, good, good, very much hope for fools so far, have we? <laughs> The Bible says there's more hope of a fool than of him, someone who's, who's hasty in their words and, and hasty to respond and hasty to say things. Be careful with the words that you say. You know, the words that you say, you can't bring them back in. Once it's out there, it's already gone and the damage is done. And we already, I've already preached an entire sermon about our communication and stuff. We saw in, chap, in James that the, the, the tongue is a fire in a world of iniquity. And, and it, you know, it's... It, can produce great disaster if you're not careful with the things that you say. So we don't want to be hasty with our words as a fool is. Ecclesiastes 5, look at verse number 1. The Bible says, Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. And he's saying it's, you know, we don't really have the same sacrifices today but in the Old Testament, they would bring in their sin, their sin offerings and these, and these other sacrifices. But they also went to learn. That's why he says, when it goes to the house of God, be more ready to hear. Hearing that wisdom and instruction is going to do you a lot better than having to bring in your sin sacrifice every time you do wrong. If you can hear the wisdom and make the change, then stop doing the wrong and receive that wisdom and that instruction, then that's way better than the fool that just keeps on coming back, just keep on bringing the sacrifices. And I think about the Catholic Church oftentimes, you know, because they'll have their penance and the, you know, the Hail Marys and all this other stuff. So people will go out and they'll live a wicked life on Saturday night and then they'll come into church on Sunday and they do their sacrifice of fools. They, they do their, their little things to get things right with God, so to speak. And those don't get them right with God anyways. But that's similar to what we're reading about here, the sacrifice of fools. It says, for they consider not that they do evil. You know, they don't even consider the fact that they're doing evil. They're just bringing in their sacrifice and um, thinking that that's just getting them right with God. We need to be more ready to hear, to receive that instruction. Verse number two, be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven and thou upon earth. Therefore let thy words be few. For a dream cometh 
through the multitude of business and a fool's voice is known by multitude of words. When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better is it that thou shouldest not vow than that thou shouldest vow and not pay. Again, we're, we're seeing the same theme that a fool has a tendency to just speak a lot. They use a multitude of words without thinking about the things that they're saying. And um, especially when it comes to vowing a vow unto God. You know, people get very flippant with saying, I swear to God this and I swear to God that. And, and just making these vows. You, you know, you may not think that's what you're doing because you hear other people say it and you're just a parrot and you can't think for yourself and you're a fool just repeating things without even thinking about the things that are coming out of your mouth. But when you're saying, I swear to God, you are swearing an oath to God of whatever it is that comes out of your mouth after you say that. Don't be a fool. Be careful with the things that come out of your mouth. And if you make a promise to God, or like, you know, people come into hard times, is another thing that happens, and they'll make, God, you get me out of this. I promise I'll go to church. I'll do this. I'll do that. And they're fools, and they don't realize what they're doing because they're fools. God says, look, don't defer to pay that. When you make a vow unto God, you better understand God hears that. You better take that seriously. A fool has no filter for their mouth. They just say things. It just comes right out. We don't want to be fools. We don't want to sound like fools. We don't want to be anywhere nearly associated with a fool. So pay attention to the words that come out of your mouth. Don't be hasty in your words. Don't be quick to speak. Be able to take it in and then say the things that you mean and mean the things that you say. Now we're going to start looking at the heart of a fool. Turn if you would. Well, you're in Ecclesiastes. Just turn to chapter 7. I'll read a few verses from Proverbs for you. Proverbs 18, 2 says, A fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. And you see, you hear so many people say, Oh, you know, you have to find your own heart and do whatever is in your own heart. That's foolish advice. That's foolish wisdom. That may be the wisdom that Hollywood will promote and that people will hear songs written about, you know, listen to your heart and all this other stuff about your heart. The Bible says, a fool hath no delight in understanding because the understanding comes from the Bible. But that his heart may discover itself. The Bible says the heart is wicked. Uh, Proverbs 28, 26 says, He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. So if you're trusting just in your own heart and the imaginations of your heart and, and the things that just come out of your heart, if that's what you're trusting in, you're a fool. But he that, whoso walketh wisely, now how are you going to walk wisely? You're going to walk wisely by getting wisdom, by getting knowledge, by getting understanding from the Word of God. He says, he shall be delivered. And Proverbs 12, 23 says, A prudent man concealeth knowledge, but the hearts of fools, the heart of fools proclaimeth foolishness. Again, there's times for a prudent man, someone who's able to discern and understand whatever situation is you're in, you don't always want to go blab in your mouth. Even if you have knowledge, even if you have you know, information about something, it's not always wise to divulge all the information that you have just at any given moment. You need to use discernment. I kind of wanted to spend more time on this point, but I think I'm going to skip passages for sake of time because there's still a lot more to go through here. Um, the Bible says, you're in Ecclesiastes 7. Let's look at verse number 4. The Bible says, The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. Now what is this saying? People who are wise, when you, the more understanding and the more knowledge you have, it also comes with, with some mourning and with some grief. And, and under, you know, when you have full comprehension of, of hell and the souls that are going there and, and just the, 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 you know, how wicked sin is and the consequences sin has. And just the more you get understanding, you know, the Bible says that Jesus Christ was a man of sorrows, Right? We are, the more understanding you get, the more, the more 
you have that type of a sorrow and mourning, but it says, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. Mirth just means happiness. And you think about, you know, people have said, I've heard the statement, ignorance is bliss, right? You can be a fool and just be like, oh yeah, you know, you don't know that your soul is on the way to hell to be burning and torture and torment for a while, but you could just have fun and kind of float through life and just, just everything is great and you live in this, in your own little fantasy world bubble, but reality is going to set in and, you know, if you don't wake up out of that bubble and um, that's why it says the heart of fools is in, in the house of mirth. It's this, it's this attitude of just, you know, well, I, the, the most important thing is just being happy. So if that means doing drugs, if that means drinking alcohol, if that just means partying it up, if that just means, you know, doing whatever, we're just going to live and we're going to be happy. We're going to be merry and that's what all we're going to be concerned about. That's where the heart of fools is. It's in the house of mirth. And look at this next verse. It says, it is better to hear the rebuke of the wise Again, when, as you gain wisdom, you're going to be rebuked. You're going to be told you're wrong. There's a little bit of mourning there. There's a little bit of sadness being told you're doing something wrong and to try to get it right. But you're gaining wisdom. You're gaining knowledge. It says it's better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. And I'll keep reading, but I'm going to get into that song of fools. Verse 6 says, For as the crackling of thorns under a pot, so is the laughter of the fool. This also is vanity. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof, and the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, as we saw this earlier, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. I want to get back to that, the song of fools, because there are so many songs of so many fools out there today, and I'm going to point out one of them. Don't be deceived by the fools of this world that are trying to enchant you with their music, with their songs. Music like Billy Joel, I'm going to point him out specifically, because this, this came to mind, because I know way more godly, ungodly music than I ought to and it's like burned into my brain and I can't get rid of it. So be careful with what you put into your ears and don't just be spending your time listening to the song of fools. There's a song that Billy Joel has out. It's called Only the Good Die Young. And what he means by that when he says only the good die young, he doesn't, he's not referring to like your actual age. He's saying if you don't go out and sin, if you don't go out and just live life up in, in, the, in the regards that they're talking about of living a life of wickedness, then you have died young because you haven't experienced all this wickedness. And that's what he's referring to saying the only the good die young. So those that are good, those that, that, that you know, respect the Bible and those that have wisdom and understanding and listen to the instruction of God, those that aren't fools like Billy Joel is, he says they die young. And in a way, it's a true statement because if he's, if, if he's defining living a full life as living a life of wickedness, I want to die young. I don't want to live that life. But he has this, this, I'll quote to you the lyrics from his song. He says, they say there's a heaven for those who, now, now again, this song, if you know the song, he's, he's like referring to a Catholic girl and all this other stuff. And I'm not condoning Catholicism, but, but this is just this mindset that he has. And this, this could be applied. It doesn't have to be Catholic or anything. He's a wicked man and he's a foolish man. And this is a song of fools. He says, they say there's a heaven for those who will wait. Some say it's better, talking about heaven, but I say it ain't. He said, it's not better to wait around. And, and he's talking about a works-based salvation, but still, he's, even if it was a works-based salvation, he's saying, yeah, pff, forget heaven. You know, I don't, I don't want to wait around for that. I don't want to live a good life for that. He says, it's not better than what I can do right here in, this, in, in living a wicked life right now. He says, I'd rather laugh with the sinners than cry with the saints. And again, we see the truth of, of the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. He'd rather be in the house of mirth with all the fools 
and spend his time laughing with them, then cry with the saints, then cry with those who are wise in the house of mourning. He says sinners are, are much more fun. Only the good die young. And people look at Billy, oh, Billy Joel, he's just this poppy type music and, and it's harmless. You know, it's not this satanic music of death metal or anything like that. No, it's just as wicked as any of those other bands that are out there that are, that are like Slayer or whatever, that are, that are openly worshiping sa Satan. Actually, it's worse. Because this is way more subtle. When you buy a Slayer album, you see the upside-down pentagram and a demon's head covered in blood on the cover. You know what you're getting. They're not hiding it. It's of Satan. That is no less of Satan than a song like this put out by Billy Joel, except he is way more subtle. He is popular and is played on the radio. I'm sure he's still played on the radio to this day. And this is a song that people just kind of bop their heads to and they think it's, oh, it's a fun song. Yeah, he's preaching to you to live a life of wickedness and that living a righteous life and living a, a life of the Bible is just is, is stupid and no good and that it's not worth it. That's what he's teaching you. Wake up to what you're being taught through this music. Don't think that this is just, oh, it's just harmless. Oh, I don't see what you get so upset about. There's nothing wrong with this music. Yes, there is. Open up your eyes and open up your ears. Don't get caught up in the house of mirth and with the song of fools. I'm going to keep going here. Jeremiah 5, 4 says, Therefore I said, surely these are poor. They are foolish, for they know not the way of the Lord nor the judgment of their God. That's what a, a foolish person doesn't know the judgment of God. They don't know the way of God. They delight in their foolishness. Now, turn if you would to Proverbs 26. We're going to see here on dealing with a fool. How we deal with a fool. It's not a really good way to do it. I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll break it to you right now. Proverbs 26, verse number 1 says, As snow in summer and as rain in harvest, so honor is not seemly for a fool. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the ass, and a rod for the fool's back. And you remember, as we get into this, a fool's not easily corrected. The Bible talks about, you know, a hundred stripes going into the back of a fool. They don't like wisdom. They don't want to hear it. They have nothing to do with it, which is why it's so difficult to deal with a fool. So we see here in verse number four, the Bible says, Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. But then look at the next verse. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. Dealing with a fool is just a trap. Because <laughs> you don't, you, you know, do I answer him or do I not? Well, either way, it's not going to be a good outcome. Because he says, first he says, don't answer a fool according to his folly, because then you're just going to be like him. You're just going to bring yourself down, lower him to that foolish level of, of dealing with him. But then he says, well, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. Because then otherwise, if you don't do it, he's going to go on just thinking that he's right and, and that he's smart and everything else, you know, to give him that knowledge. So there's basically, what I was just saying, there's no good way to deal with a fool. Because whether you answer him or not, you know, a fool's heart is not going to receive it. Verse number six says, he that sendeth a message by the hand of a fool cutteth off the feet and drinketh damage. The legs of the lame are not equal, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. As he that bindeth a stone in a sling, so is he that giveth honor to a fool. As a thorn goeth up into the hand of a drunkard, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. The great God that formed all things both rewardeth the fool and rewardeth transgressors. As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. You don't want to get caught up with fools. You, it's it's going to turn into a waste of time. You want to just, as it says, look, turn if you would to Proverbs 14 because this, this ties in exactly right in to what I was going to say on how we deal with fools. Obviously, there's not a very good way to do it, whether you answer them or not. Proverbs 14, look at verse number 7. The Bible says, 
Go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. You're saying just go away from him. Don't waste any more. As soon as you see that the lips of knowledge, the, he doesn't have them, he doesn't understand, he's a fool. He says, go from the presence of a foolish man. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. Now, this, is, this was lumped in here in my dealing with fools, but um, this is something that Christians need to watch out for. If you don't want to look like a fool, don't make a mock at sin. And what does it mean to mock something? Is you're making fun of it. You're making jokes about it. This is why, I, and again, it's, it could be easy in today's society, in today's day, to, to, to do this type of sin. But I do believe it's sin to make a mock at sin and, and to just make a bunch of jokes. That's why I, I don't like saying the, the, the gay jokes and stuff where you just, it's because sin is a wicked, a, a, a homosexuality, is a wicked, abominable perversion, right? It's not something that we need to be laughing about and mocking that sin. It's something that we need to, to hold in disgust and really not even talk about. And if you do talk about it, talk about how much you hate it and, and, and don't have anything to do with it. But it doesn't have to be that one. It could be anything when you're just making jokes about sin. And I used to do this quite a bit, like, oh, ha, ha, you know, brother so-and-so is going out to the bar to get a drink and all this other stuff. That's just foolish talking because that's making a mock at sin. Mocking, saying, oh, yeah, you know, I'm going to go get drunk. You know, it's like, don't do it. There, there's no point to it, for one. If you want to make a joke, you make a joke about other things. Don't mock sin because that's what fools do. Fools make a mock at it as if it's not a big deal. It is a big deal. Sin sends people to hell. We shouldn't be joking about that. Proverbs 20, verse 3 says, It is an honor for a man to cease from strife, but every fool will be meddling. Proverbs 29, 9 says, If a wise man contendeth with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. The bloodthirsty hate the upright, but the just seek his soul. Um, we're almost done here. I'm going to skip over this part just for sake of time. I don't have enough time to get through all this. I have a whole section on, on calling other, people's fool, other people fools um, because where Jesus says, um, talk about being angry with your brother without a cause and whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. I've got a bunch of scriptures about this and Jesus actually called people fools. He called the Pharisees fools. Okay, so it's not that you can't call anyone a fool, but um, it is kind of specific. I, I, I'm not going to get into that. I'm going to talk about the type of fools that we should be. Turn, if you would, to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We read all this stuff about foolishness and foolish people and foolish attributes, and, and we don't want to be any of that. We don't want to have the mouth of fool. We don't have the heart of fools. We don't want to sing the songs of fools. Um, but there is one type of fool that we should be. And we're going to see that in 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. And we'll close with this. 1 Corinthians 3.18 says, Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. So, it's basically the, the reverse. It, it's, it's looking at it from the other perspective, right? We know that, that wisdom is found in the Bible and in God's Word. The world looks at wisdom different than we do. The world will look at the wisdom of man. And that's why he's saying, look, if any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, like according to the world, like, oh, I'm, this is a real wise, scholarly guy in the world's eyes, become a fool. You know, in their eyes, in the world's eyes, you should become a fool. Which, if you claim to believe the Bible and say that this book is true and say, yes, I believe that heaven and earth and everything that exists was created in six literal days and I believe that this earth is, is some 6,000 odd years old and I believe everything that's written in this book, this world is going to call you a fool and let them do it. 
That is the type of fool that it's okay to be. A fool in the eyes of the world, no problem. We don't want to be a fool in the eyes of God in the light of the Bible. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 4.10, uh, We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. So if you're going to be a fool, be a fool for Christ's sake. You're going to be a fool in the eyes of the world. We don't want to have any of these foolish attributes. Um, we don't want to make mock of sin. We don't want to despise wisdom and instruction. We don't want to be hasty with our words. All of these are attributes of fools. So keep that in mind and... Um, You know, as, as we saw in the beginning, the thought of foolishness is sin. So, even when you're thinking about doing foolishness, you know, just, just remember that and, and, and um, try to stay away from, from all of these foolish attributes. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for the Bible and for these words of wisdom that you've given us in the book of Proverbs. God, I pray that you would please help us all to, to not act the fool, to not look as, as the fool does according to Scripture. God, that, that if people were going to call us fools, they'd call us fools because we believe your word and because we believe the Bible and because we're in the house of mourning, dear Lord. But let us not be looked at as fools because we despise wisdom and we despise instruction and we despise reproof. Lord, let us not be the type of fools that indulges ourselves in the sins of this world and indulges ourselves in the songs of fools, dear God, so that we can just be in the house of mirth and forget about the truth and try to be an ostrich and stick our head in the sands and be ignorant to what's going on around us. Lord, the end of that attitude and the end of that life is not good. That end is going to be destruction, dear Lord. We know that. So let us not um, be deceived into thinking that the, the temporary bliss of being in the house of mirth and listening to the Song of Fools is, is going to be good for us at all because we know that the latter end will be destruction. And Lord, we thank you for the Bible. We love you so much and pray that you would please just continue to teach us and to guide us in all truth and wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.